Welcome to the second part of my screencast series on hyper and hypovascular masses of the liver. In this screencast, we will cover hypovascular masses. By the end of this series, you should be able to distinguish common hyper and hypovascular masses within the liver based on their imaging features, compare and contrast common benign and malignant masses, and recognize some exceptions in atypical presentations. Let's talk about common hypovascular masses. In the benign category, I think of focal fat, which can be surprisingly mass-like and misleading, particularly on CT imaging. And you're really gonna lean on your in and opposed phase MRI imaging to make the diagnosis of focal fat. Hemangioma, in my mind, is the classic hypovascular mass. Some people may argue that it's hypervascular. Um, it certainly is a vascular mass, but its enhancement pattern to me is not as similar to the hypervascular masses we talked about in the first screencast as it is to some of these other hypovascular masses. Sclerose to mangioma is a very challenging diagnosis. It is almost a diagnosis of exclusion that should be made with biopsy because its appearance is very similar to some of these malignant hypovascular masses. When I think about malignant hypovascular masses, the main primary malignancy within the liver would be cholangiocarcinoma. And then the secondary malignancies within the liver are going to be metastases. And really adenocarcinoma metastasis from any primary will have similar appearance to cholangiocarcinoma within the liver. All right, so let's look at some of these enhancement patterns. Again, we're using a late arterial phase where there is opacification of the hepatic artery and the portal vein, but no opacification of the hepatic vein. In this late arterial phase, a hemangioma should show peripheral nodular discontinuous enhancement. Again, the enhancement must be discontinuous. There must be gaps in the peripheral enhancement, and that peripheral enhancement should appear nodular. Sometimes that nodule is very weak, or you're on the, a single nodule as opposed to multiple nodules along the periphery. That distinguishes it from cholangiocarcinoma or hypovascular metastasis, which tend to have a continuous peripheral enhancement. Sometimes that continual, continuous peripheral enhancement can be somewhat nodular. It is often only on the periphery, but it should not be peripheral, nodular, and discontinuous. Some hypovascular metastasis like this GI primary adenocarcinoma may show really minimal to no enhancement along the periphery in that early arterial phase. Remember that there are rapidly filling hemangiomas and these really fall back into a hypervascular differential and they may show solid arterial phase hyperenhancement. They tend to be less than two centimeters even more commonly less than one centimeter, and are often associated with some degree of perilesional shunting. They tend to, again, follow blood pool on subsequent phases of contrast. Now let's look at the portal venous phase. In the portal venous phase, that hemangioma, which showed that peripheral nodular discontinuous enhancement, may start to show some degree of more continuous enhancement. And the nodularity may be less apparent. However, it tends to remain peripheral, especially in that portal venous phase. In this much smaller hemangioma, we can see another nodule. So again, we still have that kind of peripheral nodular enhancement. And note that the enhancement should follow blood pool. So we can see the IVC and the aorta here, and we can see that the enhancement within that hemangioma, the enhancing portions of the hemangioma, are very similar in signal intensity to the aorta and IVC. In terms of cholangiocarcinoma, 
We will also have progressive enhancement of the cholangiocarcinoma, but that enhancement tends to not follow blood pool. Oftentimes in the portal venous phase, that enhancement will be actually less than the aorta, which we can partially see in this field of view. And hypovascular metastasis can have variable enhancement. Sometimes they will show progressive central enhancement, similar to a cholangiocarcinoma. Other times they will show little to no enhancement. Also note in this large intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, we do see some capsular attraction, another classic feature for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. As we move out to the two to five minute delay, you're going to see continued progressive central enhancement within the hemangioma. Okay, so now this hemangioma is homogeneously enhancing or near homogeneously enhancing, as is this smaller one. Note when you compare the hemangioma to the aorta and IVC, it is very similar in signal intensity to the blood pool. Same with this hemangioma, which is very similar in signal intensity to the blood pool. When we look at this cholangiocarcinoma, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, we see that there is progressive central enhancement. The, there's near homogeneous enhancement now of the mass, but that enhancement is actually less than blood pool. The progressive central enhancement within the cholangiocarcinoma is somewhat due to the fibrotic nature of the tumor and third spacing of gadolinium into hypovascular regions of tumor that allows the gadolinium to accumulate over time. In this delay, we see maybe some minimal peripheral enhancement of this GI primary adenocarcinoma metastasis, but again, the enhancement pattern of a metastatic adenocarcinoma will be variable. This is a very hypovascular metastasis, but it could look very similar, if not identical, to the cholangiocarcinoma. When we move to the hepatobiliary phase, we should see uniformly across almost all hypovascular masses, whether they're benign or malignant, hypointensity on the hepatobiliary phase. So hemangiomas are hypointense, cholangiocarcinomas are hypointense, and metastatic lesions should be hypointense. If it is isointense on the hepatobiliary phase, one, make sure the blood pool is cleared, so make sure there is no contrast remaining in the aorta or IVC. And then if there is still hypo or iso enhancement or uptake of eavist, there are some malignant lesions that can retain eavist in addition to F and H. So you're going to have to dig a little bit deeper into the signal intensity and imaging features of the mass. On two-weighted two imaging, we're going to see that a hemangioma is moderately to markedly hyperintense. Now, it is not as hyperintense as fluid. So the gallbladder or the CSF within the spinal cord tend to be slightly hyperintense to a hemangioma, but the hemangioma actually will have similar signal intensity to fat. So if you look at the mesenteric fat or the subcutaneous fat, hemangiomas are typically isointense to that subcutaneous or mesenteric fat. And you can see that's the case with both of these hemangioma. In terms of cholangiocarcinoma, it does tend to be hyperintense. I would say that the hyperintensity is mild to marked. So as opposed to the hemangioma, which is moderate to marked, this is mild to moderate, okay? Not very rarely does the hyperintensity get to the degree that a hemangioma is, although I have seen some that are quite hyperintense. Hypovascular metastasis are highly variable. Uh, they tend to be mixed uh, in terms of their hyperintensity on T2-weighted imaging. Oftentimes, they're mildly hyperintense relative to the liver, unless you're talking about some sort of mucinous type of metastasis, which can then mimic fluid. On T1-weighted imaging, similar to what we talked about on our hypervascular metastasis or hypervascular masses screencast, real nodules and masses 
tend to be T1 hypo intense. Okay, so hemangioma, cholangiocarcinoma, adenocarcinoma metastasis. Real masses in the liver tend to be hypo intense to the background liver. All right, so let's just review some of the masses that we've seen in the first two screencasts. These are some different examples of hypo and hypervascular masses. Look at this arterial phase. Look at the four different boxes. They each contain a different mass that we've covered so far. And try and think just based on the arterial phase, which box you think contains which mass or nodule. Now we're moving to a more delayed phase. Here we can see this mass, which was hypervascular, is equilibrating. This mass, which showed peripheral nodule discontinuous enhancement, is starting to show progressive central enhancement. This also shows progressive central enhancement, but it's less than blood pool. And here we see washout and capsule appearing. So if we have hepatobiliary phase and delayed phase, we can say that this is an FNH. This is a cholangiocarcinoma, although again, adenocarcinoma metastasis could have a similar appearance. Hemangioma and hepatocellular carcinoma. Let's look at a couple more examples. Again, classic example here, T2 hyperintense, T1 hypointense. Notice the signal intensity is very similar to fat. We have peripheral nodular discontinuous enhancement, progressive enhancement nicely following the blood pool. There's not really diffusion restriction here. It's mostly T2 shine through with the mass being hyperintense to the background liver on our ADC map. And this is a classic hemangioma. Here we have another mass little more challenging okay we see this rim of t2 hyper intensity that may be slightly more apparent on our fat saturated image you can see some central hypo intensity on our pre-contrast t1 weighted gradient recalled echo we see it is hypo intense to the background liver on our contrast enhanced imaging we have rim arterial phase hyperenhancement. Notice this liver is very heterogeneous, so this is a person with cirrhosis. And so we might be thinking hepatocellular carcinoma, but in this case, that rim arterial phase hyperenhancement is not going to be consistent with hepatocellular carcinoma, or at least a typical hepatocellular carcinoma. As we progress through our phases of contrast, we see progressive enhancement but that progressive enhancement is slightly less than blood pool. This mass does show some diffusion restriction, particularly along the rim of the mass. And this is consistent with an intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Again, this same enhancement pattern you could see with a breast cancer metastasis to the liver an adenocarcinoma of the lung metastatic to the liver or a GI primary. But this turned out to be an intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. In summary, hemangiomas, T1 hypointense, moderately to markedly T2 hyperintense, and it really is similar to that subcutaneous fat. It has to have peripheral nodular discontinuous arterial phase hyperenhancement. If it's contiguous or not peripheral or not nodular, then you have to say it's an indeterminate nodular mass. The progressive enhancement should follow blood pool. And realize that a sclerosed hemangioma is not going to follow this pattern, but is going to more closely mimic the pattern that we described with cholangiocarcinoma or adenocarcinoma metastasis, which is T1 hypointense mildly to moderately T2 hyperintense, some degree of arterial phase hyperenhancement or hypoenhancement, and then progressive enhancement that does not follow blood pool.
I hope you found this screencast helpful. In part three, we will start to address some of the pitfalls in atypical presentations, and I hope you join us for that screencast. Thank you for your time.